Hey there everyone, Boys by Dragonite here and welcome to my Chaos Blue Eyes in-depth deck profile. Now let's just get into it. Basically I'm just gonna go through the deck and tell you why I use the cards. So off the back, three blue eyes by dragons, because this is a blue eyes deck and why would I not run three blue eyes? Sadly I don't run blue eyes ultimate dragon, I just could not fit them in this deck, so if you're looking for that, sorry. Anyways, um, one BLS and one Chaos Sorcerer. I only run one Chaos Sorcerer because two is a bit too cloggy and creates hands like, say, you have this in your hand. It creates too many hands like this to where you need uh, your graveyard set up, but you just don't. So I only run one of them, and he works fine. Now, basically, you know what these two do. They banish, they're amazing, and kind of overpowered. Not really, but they're really good. So anyways, three Schwarzschild, the Limit Dragon, and one Parasect, the Interstellar Dragon. Now, the re for starters, we'll start with what the hell are these things. Now, basically, I was just looking for a level 8 monsters that have fit, helped me with the Chaos build, and these really work well, because this, if your opponent has a monster with 2,000 or more attack, which in this current meta they should, especially summon this monster, extremely easy to get out. And this one, if you have a level 8 monster, you can normal summon this without tributing. And you have 6 of these, 6 of these, and only 1 of these, so... Usually when you have this in your hand, you can get it out pretty pretty fast. Now I'll play 3 of these and 1 of these, because in my original build, there was way too many lights, not enough darks. So I just needed to tip the scale a bit. Okay, so this is a dragon deck, I put Blaster and Tidal. Just because... Banish! Yeah, that's about it. Now, two Light Pulsar and two Dark Flare. If I had to choose out of these two, like, these two are basically run the deck, because uh, Light Pulsar helps you set up your graveyard. You could also use this from your hand and graveyard, which I really love about this card. Dark Flare really helps you set up your graveyard with its effects. Take one card from your hand to the graveyard, from your deck to the graveyard, send Eclipse Waver and send a Blaster. It's just really good. And they both have the same summoning summoning conditions as these guys. One dark, one light. And yeah. Also, Light Pulsar has the added effect that when he's destroyed, he can either special summon Dark Flare or Schwarzschild, which I really like. I always go for Dark Flare, though, because <laughs> Dark Flare goes for all those extra plays. Anyways, three dra Black Dragon Cold Spurts and White Dragon Wave and Buster, two of them. Now, the reason why I have three and two is the same reason I have three and one. Just need a bit more dark in here, so yeah. These guys are basically easy. The banish one light, banish one dark, and when it's destroyed, they add the other to the hand. Really good, really good to just gain a bit more advantage on the board. Three Raiden, because we really just want to mill to the graveyard. This deck is really dependent on the graveyard. Macrocosmos, D Fisher just destroy this deck to the point where it's unplayable. So yeah, mill to the graveyard. And I play Raiden over Lylar, Lylar or any of the other Light Sworns because basically I, I don't want to have to wait till the end phase. Main phase, middle of the top two, start my plays. That's how this is good. Alright, one Equips Waver because the only real targets for this are the Blue Eyes, which I really don't need to help getting these to my hand. Uh, Shorts of Child and Parasec. Now, whenever I go for Equips Waver, I always go for Shorts of Child because I don't use up my. Uh, Normal summon, plus I always need darks in the graveyard with this deck because lights are really easy to come by. Honest, because light monsters, honest, do I say more? Two curry bandit, because, well, honestly, just mill, 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 and it helps me get one of my nine, no, yeah, nine traps, or traps, <laughs> spell cards. So yeah, very good first turn play, even halfway through the duel is a good card. Now, three white stone, a legend, and only one maiden. Now, this... One thing I have to say about this deck is it's extremely aggressive, so Maiden really didn't fit in too often. One, because she's a spellcaster. Two, because she's more of a defensive, just put her down and have your opponent take a couple turns to get over her. Which I like in some cases, like some cases I have dead hands and she helps get me out of those dead hands. But for the most part, Whitestone a legend with all sorts of different cards, just right into this to get this into the hand trade in like 
just getting that blue eyes red dragon to the hand is a lot more useful than this because this is really basically an OTK deck. You could just OTK so fast with this deck. Um, Allure of Darkness, even though we have a shortage of dark monsters, I feel like a bit more consistency is really needed in this deck. Get this with Curry Bandit. Yeah. Now two trade-ins, and I actually play no cards of consonance because I only have, what, no, three targets for cards of consonance, so I wouldn't, <laughs> no, I'm not playing that. So yeah, trade-in, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight targets for trade-in, so yeah, I think two is a good thing. It's really helped the deck stay consistent, and with Whitestone of Legend, with that, it really works. Foolish Burial, set up your graveyard, charge of the Light Brigade, mill three, grab a Raiden, Burial from a different dimension, we banish, gets those banishes back off for more plays, and triple silver cry. And even though I only play three, silver cry really helps me get a lot of like, like silver cry into this, then special, then normal summon this, or into this, normal summon this, go into this, which I've actually never done. Anyways, onto the <laughs> extra deck, just opens lots of plays. Azura is silver dragon. I have never once gone into this card. Never. Never. Because <laughs> most of the time I either want to go for, like, either, wait, basically when I have a level 8, I usually have another level 8. I'd rather go for my XCs than this guy. So that's why I only play one of them. And I really want, like, if I was going to cut anything in the extra deck, it would probably be him. So yeah, it'd probably be him. But it's a blue eyes deck, and it just feels wrong to trash the blue eyes synchro, so I kept him. Um. Crimson Blader and Stardust, my two level 8s. Out of the two of these, I extremely enjoy Crimson Blader because it helps stun a lot of decks. But like, depending on the situation, if you want to be a bit more defensive or a bit more offensive, this is how you do it, guys. If you're going offensive, Crimson Blader won't destroy a monster. Attack, if they have a bit of life points left, they can't really summon anything good next turn. And if you want to play defensively, like if you're just on your last ditch effort, Stardust is there. Goyo is Goyo. Hermades destroys like a lot of different cards, like completely destroys like the flip effects of, well, not really destroys, but negates the flip effects of Shadals, destroys a Yang Zing deck. The Yang Zing deck cannot function with this on board, so yeah. And if there's another card I, was, I may be uh, dropping, it'd be this one because like I said, this one maintains so much advantage in this deck, and I rarely have just two level eight dragons to XYZ. I usually have a few cards on the field, and then the two, the two uh, level four, level eight dragons that I XC with. So I rarely get to use this card's effects, but on the off chance that I do, which I have a couple times, it's good. Uh, Heretic Sun Dragon Overlord of the Heliopetos, just pop everything. Felgrand, Felgrand, and this is probably my favorite of the level eights because really, if there's monsters that you can't destroy, just bring out this. It lets you actually get more graveyard in, excavate the top card of your deck, and destroy. Or not destroy, send to the top or bottom of the deck. Really useful card. Now I play the one big eye because I play two of the dragon rollers. I've gone into big eye a couple times. Uh, very good card. I play him over Draco Sack because, I want, like I said, I want to be very aggressive with this deck. And if I had Draco Sack, it would just take up too much board. Too much board. Uh, Bouncer because... Uh, I have three level sixes. There have been situations to where I was just like, like say it gets Veilard or Breakthrough Skilled or something like that. And you have a Chaos Earther or another one on board. You could just Bouncer to make use of it. Though that's never happened to me. There have been situations before I put Bouncer in here that I would like that to have happened. So Bouncer is also another one that could be taken out. On to the level fours. Queen Dra Dragon Dijin. This is such a good card in this deck because basically, like like mid to late game, this is insane because you just bring it on board, grab any of these monsters, special summon it, and even though it can't affect it, it can't use its effects and it can't attack, I usually just succeed with the cards, get another one out, and yeah, very good. 101, Volvo, and Excitin. Must I say more? <laughs> So anyways, thank you very much for watching. This has been my in-depth look at my Chaos Blue Eyes deck. If you really like it, please subscribe, leave a like, comment, and tell me how I did. Anyways, that's all. Blue Eyes White Dragonite, out.